Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm going to show you how to season your smoker. Now you may ask the question, well, why do I need to season my smoker? And by seasoning, what we mean is covering it in oil. So if you have a smoker like this Franklin pit behind me, that's completely exposed metal, there's no paint on it anywhere, it's essential that we season the smoker so we prevent a lot of rust. Even on smokers that come painted, a lot of times you're going to have to do this process to the outside because the metal expands and contracts as you heat it and let it cool, and then eventually the paint chips off. And rather than spraying on new paint, I think it's easier actually to use some oil to make sure that you protect that metal from rust. For some smokers, you don't need to season the outside. So if you have, say, an offset smoker like this, but the outside is powder coated, well, that's not going to chip off like paint, so you don't need to put oil on the outside. But for all smokers, it's important that you put oil on the inside so that you protect that metal on the inside from rusting because you don't want rusty metal to get into contact with the meat you're trying to cook. Now, I just got this smoker. You can see the crate behind it still. But in the uncrating instructions, it says that this smoker is ready to go right away and you don't need to burn it out. And if by burn it out, they mean build a fire, coat the thing in oil, and let the fire run for a while, then I don't know if I really believe it. There's a lot of some kind of grease or something on the outside of the smoker, so maybe they pre-seasoned the outside. But the inside definitely has not been seasoned, so we have to do that at bare minimum. But I want to show the whole process of seasoning the inside and outside so you can adapt it to whatever your needs are. Our tool today is going to be PAM. And this is a very easy way to do it. You could, you know, have a bucket of oil and with a rag coat the entire surface of the smoker with oil and you could do the same thing on the inside, but that's kind of a pain. This is a much easier way to get a more even coat of oil on all the surfaces. Step one, we're going to cover the inside with oil. Now we repeat the process on the outside of the smoker. I'm done screwing around with this. It's so cold out that the paper doesn't really want to light very well. So when all else fails, you can use a torch. Also a side benefit of using a torch is it kind of sends preheated air through the smoker so it starts drafting so your fire gets going with air already being sucked through. All right, the temperature on the outside is currently 39. So I was able to use the torch to get that butcher paper lit and now I literally have a grease fire and that will get all that wood going in no time. Now I know a lot of you guys are probably watching this video not because you're super curious about seasoning a smoker, but because this is a Franklin barbecue pit. So I want to walk you through some of the things that I'm seeing with this pit right now. Number one, now I do have a pretty hot fire in here, but this metal has warped enough that I can't really close the door well anymore. Like you could force it in and you know use a lot of elbow grease, but it doesn't want to actually shut. Um, second thing I've noticed is I have smoke leaking from the cook chamber door. Um, right now, since I have a hot fire, the smoke's pretty clean, so you're not really seeing it very much. And then the third thing is, 
on the tell truth thermometer, there is now fog on it when there was no fog before on the inside. Let's take a second to talk about why we're burning a fire and not just spraying the outside with oil. Now, the reason we burn a fire is because we want to change the chemical composition of this oil into something different. And the process that we're looking for is called polymerization. Now, that could be an intimidating word. And uh, if you're curious, it comes from two Greek words, palus, which means many, and meros, which means parts. It's something made of many parts. So you can think of the individual molecules in oil as links that would make up a chain. And polymerization just links all those parts together. And so what happens is it forms a polymer coating on the outside of the firebox and the cook chamber. And it's more like a plastic than it is like an oil. So oil could wipe off. Plastic isn't gonna wipe off and it forms a protective coating on the outside. So that metal isn't exposed to oxygen in the atmosphere and therefore does not rust. If you've heard of the smoke point of oils, that's when that oil starts to break down. Now there are a number of different reactions that are happening. The one we're concerned about is polymerization. But for canola oil, like what's in pan, the smoke point is at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to be at 400 degrees or above for our polymerization reaction to occur. And so that's why we wanna burn a hot fire because if we do that, then we get that protective coating. If we don't, then it's just kinda of some sticky oil that smells bad. So we wanna make sure we get it nice and hot. And so on this one, Right now on the firebox, the temperature is in the 430, 440 range, and it'll probably continue to climb for a while. So it'll probably get up to 500, maybe 550 degrees. So think of a screaming hot cast iron skillet. That's about the temperature you would have. I just mentioned smoke point, And if you don't have an infrared thermometer, you can still know if you're getting your pit hot enough or not. Because once you pass the smoke point, it'll start to smoke. And right here on the firebox, now we're starting to get quite a bit of smoke. And this is telling me we're moving in the right direction. And this is all going to kind of turn a dark, dark brown and form the protective coating that we're doing this whole process for. Feed in a couple of these little guys. At this point, we're starting to see some different things happening as the process carries along. So the initial browning, what's happening there with the oil is oxidation, cyclization, polymerization. But as the temperature goes up, then you get carbonization. So on this firebox, you can see both of those stages. Right here, you have the dark color, the dark brown that's from those previous reactions. Then it carbonizes and gets this nice black sheen. That's what you want. That's gonna be the coating that protects the metal for a long period of time. As you may be able to tell, I have this thing just screaming hot right now. But that's the point because I want all of this to set properly and I don't want it to be some sticky, gross, oily layer that you know, is in my way every time. I want it to be a protection for the smoker. And it also looks really cool. But one thing I noticed is right here, this is the first part of the cook chamber that started to turn black. So that tells me the hottest part of this thing is gonna be right here. So this is a little bit cooler. This is a lot cooler. So I think the smoke is coming out, the smoke and the heat rather, are coming out right here and then boom, up at the top and then it cools off as it moves toward the stack. So when you hit temperatures like this, 678 degrees and probably in some places over 700 degrees, that's what you want to build that carbonization. Now, another thing that you should do is you should repeat this process periodically. What I do is every time I cook on an offset, I will spray the firebox down. That's just part of my procedure. So I'll spray the firebox, light the fire, go do all the prep I need to do. So trimming meat, seasoning meat, and I allow this to build layer after layer of protection because if you don't do that, then you're going to start to get rust, start to have to deal with those things. But if you just take preventative measures, it should always be taken care of. So I wanna check on the temperatures of this stack. At the bottom, 444, that's pretty hot. At the top, 265. So this isn't necessarily related to seasoning the smoker, but one thing I wanna point out is there's a lot of heat loss as the smoke moves up the stack. And so that's why on tall stacks, you can get something called back pressure. So the temperature of the air at the top is no longer as hot as it was at the bottom. And the greater that difference, the more it's going to impede the flow of air as it comes out of the stack. So a tall stack oftentimes is good for convection, but if it gets too tall, 
then it can impede the convection. So we're gonna have to do some testing with this, but that's my fear with this tall and skinny stack. Nice. You hear that? It kind of sounds like a jet engine. It's a lot of air moving through there. <laughs> wow. Taking a look at this right here, I see kind of an even black coating everywhere that tells me we got the polymerization and the protection that we were looking for. The only exception is right here where we have the opening to the firebox. And that's just because it got so hot that it degraded the coating. And so that's a simple fix. We just spray another layer of oil on there as this thing is cooling down and that will set the coating that we're trying to get everywhere. So nice and black, I don't see any rust. Very happy with this. And that's really all there is to it. Now, one thing I do need to mention is that the results that we're looking for, so that black shiny exterior is the result of heat and time. So it's not like you just burn a hot fire for 30 minutes and then you're done with it. What you need to do is burn the fire for long enough that you get a uniform coating on the exterior surface of the smoker. That way your smoker is protected and your hard earned money that you spend on that smoker is protected with it. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MadScientistBarbecue. I'll see you guys next time.